The TH phenotype adaptive immune response is characterized by three key phenotypes, TH1, TH2, and TH17. Depending on the antigen presentation by the dendritic cell, that epitope that is presented to the T cell is recognized by the T cell receptor. With the appropriate co-stimulation, it will produce, for instance, cytokines like interleukin-12 and interferon gamma. These are the key two cytokines that will induce the differentiation into Th1 phenotype, which is characterized by a very particular set of cytokine production, which have the key target cell as the macrophages. This Th1 response that's actually conducted by the activated macrophages is basically triggered by intracellular pathogens and it works in tissue repair and foreign bodies. In other words, the danger signal that is presented to the T cell by the dendritic cell is derived from either intracellular pathogens or because we do need tissue repair after surgery, after we cut ourselves, or foreign bodies, like having a splinter. So this is a typical response and the mechanism by which the adaptive immune system is going to deal with that danger response in the Th1 uh, response would be phagocytosis. So they eat up the cell that has the intracellular pathogens, they kill the intracellular pathogens, and when they cannot deal with that in those ways, they can also induce granuloma formation like in the tuberculosis disease where if it cannot kill the intracellular pathogen, at least it keeps it on check by having the granuloma formed around the bacterium. With a different type of antigen presentation, we have interleukin-4 in the milieu that actually will differentiate that naive T cell into a Th2 cell. The characteristic cytokines of a Th2 cell would be different. You can see there's no overlap between Th1 and Th2 typical cytokines, and the target cell in this case is eosinophils. What makes the immune system become a Th2? Basically, it's parasites, allergens. This is where the drugs as allergens can actually also trigger a Th2 response. And this Th2 response will basically try to deal with that danger signal by producing an atopic response characterized by the presence of IgE or antibody mediated like the ADCC or the CDC complex of complement system to deal with the cells that are perceived as a danger signals. It also will induce mast cell degranulation. So this is a Th2 response. Uh, the immune system has specialized itself depending on the signal that's presented to the T cell into which kind of TH response they need to deal with a different antigen. And finally, we have a more complex milieu that will have a presence of certain cytokines like interleukin 1, 6, 21, and 23, but they cannot act alone. They have to be in a cocktail with TGF beta to then differentiate that T cell into a TH17. The characteristic cytokines of the TH17, again distinct from what we see in TH2 and TH1, will target the neutrophils. And what is the trigger for this TH17? Well, now we have extracellular pathogens where the neutrophils can actually produce antimicrobial peptides or they can actually also help with barrier integrity and they produce typically inflammation. Let's start with a brief summary of the role of the immune system in psoriasis. So generally it is known that there's some genetic predisposition and in the addition of an environmental trigger that could be any, any combination of different factors we do know that there's, at the end, a stressed keratinocyte on the epidermis. The stressed keratinocyte signals danger, and this danger signal is basically stimulated via cytokines like TNF-alpha, 
interleukin-6, interleukin-1 beta to the dermal dendritic cell. This cell will now look at this potential danger signal and it will actually migrate towards the lymph nodes when it's activated and it's going to be presenting the specific T cell antigen that the T cell will recognize via the T cell receptor. This antigen is unique to that specific interaction with the stress keratinocyte. So that signal is the one that the dendritic cell that's activated presents to the T cell and in the addition of, a, of an appropriate co-stimulation, the T cell will now produce interleukin-12. That makes the T cell differentiate into H Th1. The Th1 travels back, migrates, and co-localizes to the original site of the perceived danger, in this case, the skin. And it will produce TNF-alpha, interleukin-2, interferon gamma, and the target cell is a macrophage, the one that we know as M1. This macrophage is going to deal with the perceived danger, basically, from the stress keratinocytes, and it will try to produce the defense mechanism from the adaptive immune system that's typical for the Th1 response. Now, this particular interaction from the keratinocyte in psoriasis is known to also activate interleukin-23 when the dendritic cell presents the antigen to the T cell. And this will differentiate other set of T cells into the Th17s, which in turn will produce a typical Th17 profile, which is interleukin-17 and interleukin-22. Basically, that will stimulate neutrophils. Now, neutrophils are not normally in the epidermis. And this is a very typical Th17 response going back to the site of perceived danger and stimulating neutrophils at the site of the original stress of the skin. In addition, keratinocytes do have receptors to interleukin-17, and they will proliferate and be activated with more inflammatory cytokines, and this results in psoriatic plaque. So mainly, many of the symptoms that we see and signs in psoriasis will be derived from the very predominant interleukin-17 uh, expression and interleukin-22 also, but it's basically a Th17 profile. But there's still a lot of the Th1 response with macrophage activation. In addition, more recently, it is believed that there's some role of IL-4 uh, synthesis and proliferation of Th2s from that original signal. This Th2 will activate the M2 macrophages that are well known to produce and stimulate angiogenesis, which is also seen in plaque psoriasis. The role of Th2 is much more clear and predominant in atopic dermatitis rather than psoriasis. Psoriasis has a more predominant Th17 and Th1 responses, but Th2 also is activated in psoriasis to some degree. In addition, there are some resident cells that are called the cytotoxic T cells. Now, these are not CD4 TH helper cells. These are CD8 cytotoxic cells that share some of the cytokine profiles of the TH1. So there are cytotoxic T cells 1 and 17. Cytotoxic T cells 17, they can actually also produce phagocytosis and kill the perceived danger. So they migrate to the epidermis, and they do present the profiles of both Th1 and Th17, but they are CD8 T cells. So there's CD4 adaptive system involvement, CD8 adaptive system involvement, and there's also an activation of the innate system responses that results in a complex disease with proliferation of keratinocytes, plaque psoriasis, angiogenesis with erythema, and inflammation with presence of neutrophils and macrophages in the diseased tissue. 
So in summary, the innate system, which normally maintains the integrity of the barrier, is the first one that encounters the signal that is perceived as danger. We don't know exactly what triggers psoriasis, but we do know that there's a perceived danger signal. And this innate system responds to the danger. It will engage and activate the adaptive response with all three, Th1, Th17, and Th2 profiles, as well as increase and maintain an innate response that engages M1 and M2 macrophages. It also stimulates migration and activation of the T-cell cytotoxic cells that are TC1 and TC17.